Gradually, decentralized trust will be accepted as a new and effective trust model. We have seen this evolution of understanding before on the internet, Andreas Antonopoulos. Welcome to EOS Weekly. This video is made possible in part by EOS New York, a top 21 block producer who is dedicated to reinvesting into the success of EOS and always adding value. Please help show your support for these videos by voting for EOS New York. People expect tokens to behave in certain familiar ways, predictable ways as if they had physical weight to them like stones, where as long as each individual person takes care of their own account security, that those tokens will remain safely under their own control. Back in September, when Tribe had an issue with their airdrop, they were able to pull back a large set of tokens that had already been distributed out to EOS token holders. This caught a lot of people off guard. Even many people who were pretty well informed of the inner workings of EOS didn't until then understand the amount of flexibility that application builders had over their tokens. But after this incident in September, the EOS community woke up to this new reality, and suddenly those tokens in their accounts began to look a whole lot more whimsical than many people would have liked to believe. The token contract is a special form of smart contract. It is through the token contract that people are able to create tokens on the EOS blockchain. Brand new, custom designed tokens with their own unique properties and behaviors. These tokens are a fundamental necessity to our chain, an essential tool for application builders. Tokens empower application builders to not only align incentives within their system, but ultimately, tokens empower app builders to turn their applications into true DAX, decentralized autonomous communities, if they so desire. Just like normal smart contracts, token contracts reside in accounts on the EOS blockchain, the same type of accounts where the everyday token holder stores their tokens. And access to token contracts is controlled the normal way, through EOS IO permissions. Any person or group of people who collectively have access to a token contract can do things that change the fundamental properties and behaviors of that token. Things like the max supply of the token, the inflation rate, transfer fees, and so on. Just like this sounds, these are highly impactful changes to that token, and of course to any systems that utilize that token. The EOS token itself has its own token contract, which is under the control of our 21 elected block producers. If you've been following along, You've probably noticed that the EOS community regularly debates things related to the amount of inflation of the EOS token and where that inflation should be directed. If we ever wanted to actually move forward with one of these types of changes, the way we would do so in concrete terms is by the BPs modifying the EOS token contract. But the good thing about these changes to the EOS token is that the BPs, who are an elected decentralized group, would have to approve any such changes via a 15 out of 21 multi sig approval what they call supermajority vote. Ideally, all applications building on EOS would have a similar multi-sig setup for their own custom tokens, where a decentralized group of people would have to approve any and all changes to the token contracts. This would help ensure that token contracts would only be modified if that modification was truly in line with the desires of the application token holders. The alarming fact that has recently come to light though is that the majority of applications have not configured their token contract accounts in this way. EOS New York recently dug into it and reported that, at the time of this writing in mid-April, eight out of the top 10 applications in EOS still had a single owner key under their permissions for their token contract account. What this means is that one person, a single person with access to that key, could go in and modify the token contract for those applications configured this way. This puts a tremendous amount of power into the hands of a single individual, and it goes against the spirit of decentralization. This one person could, for example, inflate the token supply and send all of the newly issued tokens to an account of their choosing, an exit scam. Or they could add fees to all future transfers and collect those fees for themselves. Assuming the one individual with access to that owner key is honest and trustworthy and would never engage in such malicious behavior, Having a single owner key still carries the risk of that key being compromised and a bad actor gaining access to that token contract. This situation makes for a high risk environment, which is where we find ourselves today. High risk not only for the applications that have their token contract accounts configured in this way, but should one more of these tokens be compromised, there will be collateral damage to the reputation of EOS as a whole. 
So this raises some important questions for all of us in the EOS community to consider. One of those questions being, why do we empower applications to modify their tokens at all? In other words, why not force all token contracts to be static, immutable, where once deployed, the rules for that token would be set in stone forever? If we were to do something like this, it would definitely make the tokens more tangible and more predictable, like physical objects similar to poker chips. Token immutability would align the behavior of tokens with the expectations of our users in this way. And it would eliminate the issue altogether of token contract security, being that the token contract would simply be immutable. The downside of this approach, though, is that it would take away the ability for application builders to fine-tune the tokenomics of their systems. Going back to the EOS token itself, as we mentioned earlier, the EOS community has ongoing debates about our tokenomics. How much inflation is the right amount? And where should that inflation money be directed? Imagine if we couldn't change these type of things, that we had to live with the 1% inflation for BP pay and the 4% inflation for worker proposals forever and ever. This would clearly have its downsides. We wouldn't be able to adjust things based on our learnings, based on the changing environment or the changing sentiment of the EOS community. So instead of making the EOS token totally immutable, we make it mutable by design. But we also put some tight controls around the EOS token so that changes can only be made when we are relatively confident that the community of EOS token holders wants and agrees with those changes. The application builders need this same kind of flexibility. Getting the tokenomics perfectly correct at the time of launch is rarely, if ever, going to happen. These teams are typically going to learn things once they put their systems out in the wild, and they're going to want to be able to react to those learnings and make the corresponding adjustments to their tokens. In this context, EOS by design gives all of its users a tremendous amount of freedom. And when it comes to the app builders, EOS gives our app builders the freedom to not only configure and reconfigure their token contracts, but also the freedom to secure access to those contracts however they see fit. To restate the problem in this context, what we're seeing is that these two freedoms when combined together is what is resulting in this high-risk environment. Because unfortunately, most of those configurable token contracts are not being properly secured. All right, so what is the solution to all of this? First of all, nobody that we've heard of so far is proposing that we actually make all token contracts immutable. Everyone seems to understand that applications will have legitimate reasons to tweak things and fine tune their tokenomics over time. The suggestions being made so far are all focused around using multi-sig permissions to better secure these token contract accounts. Multi-sig as a quick refresher, is simply a way of spreading out control over an account to multiple people, so that some subset of those people have to approve of any and all actions on the account. You can add as many people as you want to a multi-sig, and the number of approvals required is highly configurable using a system of weights and thresholds. You can even structure these multi-sigs into hierarchies, so there is virtually no limit to the level of organizational complexity that can be modeled into the EOS blockchain. You can think of multi-sigs as EOS's way of decentralizing the governance side of our applications. This multi-sig functionality is already available today to any and all EOS accounts, and so the application builders could configure this at any time for their token contracts. Really, the only difference in some of the solutions being proposed relates to providing some options around who these people are who are part of the token contract multi-sigs. How do you select those individuals who together can collectively decide to make changes to the token contract? Now, the most obvious answer is that the team of people who are building the app would be the ones who are included in the multi-sig. This could be a step in the right direction for many of the teams out there. But imagine a situation where the app is mainly being built by contractors, and the lead developer doesn't necessarily trust the contractors. There are cases like this where a multi-sig could in fact be less secure. It's all about having an intelligent process for selecting trustworthy individuals, combined with setting up the weights and thresholds of the multi-sig so as to prevent against malicious collusion among those individuals. And there are three different approaches that an application could potentially take when selecting these individuals for their multi-sig. The first option we've already mentioned, the team that is building the app could appoint people from within their team or elsewhere to be involved in the governance side of things. Those appointed people would then be added to the token contract multi-sig as a way of adding additional security to their token contract and to help bring their app governance on chain. 
A second option is to have a systematic way of electing people to these positions. This is the solution that EOS DAC is advocating for in this blog post here. EOS DAC calls these people custodians when they are elected by the token holders to handle the governance side of this system. And when you start electing your custodians, this is a major milestone towards running your system as an actual DAC. The natural progression might be to start with option one, because it's quicker and easier, with the intention of eventually advancing to option two, moving from appointed to elected custodians to help ensure that there is some diversity among your custodians. And it gives a voice to your application token holders as well. Now our third option is the one being proposed by EOS New York, which is that the elected block producers themselves be the custodians of the app token contract. For any app builders who go with this third option, their app tokens would have the same level of security and decentralized control as the EOS token itself, requiring 15 out of the 21 elected BPs to approve any and all changes to their token contract. During this town hall meeting, the Everipedia team described several advantages to this approach. The link to this video is in the show notes below, but to summarize some of these advantages, first of all, any apps that go with this third option would have their tokens deployed via the EOSIO.token system contract, the same system contract used to deploy the EOS token itself. And one of the things that got Everipedia excited about this idea of utilizing EOSIO.token is that this would mean that the app team would no longer have to cover the RAM costs of hosting the token contract in their own account. So there are some serious cost savings to the apps with this third option. Secondly, this would help certify to everyone that there is solid decentralized control over these tokens. Not only is this helpful from a marketing standpoint in that it ensures a certain level of immutability of these tokens, but as Everipedia noted, it can also help streamline the process of getting app tokens listed on exchanges being that the app teams can show that they have the same structure and controls in place as the EOS token. This would help to simplify the exchange audit process. Finally, this makes it easier to support token transfers across all participating tokens, because the same native Clio's transfer method for the EOS token could be used for the app tokens when they are deployed in this way. So any website that supports transfers of the EOS token could very easily add transfer support for these app tokens. Now these first two options are available as of today, with out-of-the-box EOSIO functionality, along with the help of the open source software and tutorials being provided by EOS DAC for this second option here. This third option is not available as of yet. EOS New York did put this up as a referendum so as to ensure the community supported this idea, and so far it has overwhelming approval. A second part of this referendum also includes auctioning off premium token names and using those funds for core EOSIO code development. We'll be covering the second part of the proposal in an upcoming episode about different proposals to fund core EOS projects. There's a link to this referendum below if you want to understand this further, or if you want to voice your opinion on these matters by voting for or against this proposal. That's it for this week's episode. We appreciate your time and hope you found this content informative. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. We'll help you stay current on EOS as this revolution unfolds. Thanks, and we'll see you next week, right here on EOS Weekly.